Geauga Lake has a long, proud, and ultimately sad history. Located in Aurora, Ohio, this opened its gates in 1889, featuring a steam-powered carousel. They got their first coaster in 1925, and the park kept growing over the next 100 years, surviving tornadoes, fires, but in the end could not survive the ownership of Six Flags and Cedar Fair. This small regional park was briefly transformed into the world's largest amusement park, and that was the beginning of the end. From Geauga Lake to Six Flags Ohio to Six Flags Worlds of Adventure, back to Geauga Lake, the park was shut down in 2007 after 118 seasons. Over those years, it saw 14 coasters come and go, and today I want to rank them up. These are the coasters of Geauga Lake, from worst to best. The park may have been around for 118 years, but I was only able to get there once. That was in the summer of 2002, and turns out that was a really good time to go. They didn't add anything after that, and they hadn't started tearing their rides out yet. Number 14, Beaver Land Mine Ride, a Zero Tivoli Family Coaster, opened in 2000, closed with the park in 2007. This was one of four new coasters coming to the park in 2000, part of the Six Flags Ohio rebrand, and this was the only one of the bunch that was family friendly. It opened as a Six Flags ride, so it was called Roadrunner Express, being renamed in 2004 under Cedar Fair. This is no small kids coaster, 26.3 feet tall, 1,181 feet long, and it has 28 other clones out there. Most of these are overseas, but if you're in America and want to see what this was like, check out Harley Quinn Crazy Train at Six Flags Great Adventure. The main characteristic is the long train, made up of 20 cars, fitting 40 riders on every cycle. This was moved to Papaya Park in France, operating since 2009 as Roller Coaster. Number 13, Wild Mouse, a BA Schiff & Associates Wild Mouse, opened in 1958, closed in the 70s. These were very common back in the 50s and 60s, 58 of them around the world, but unfortunately, there aren't any more out there. That includes Cedar Point, the coaster they just kind of replaced on their new boardwalk. This was a hybrid, steel track, wood supports, your typical Wild Mouse layout, sharp turns, small hills in the second half, all on a compact plot of land. This BA Schiff large wild mouse model may be gone, but that type of ride experience can be found anywhere. When this shut down, it was moved in-state to Chippewa Lake Park, operated for about six years, and then was left to rot after the park closed in 1978. The coaster was left in ruins for almost 30 years, finally torn down in 2009. Number 12, Little Dipper, a national amusement device family wooden coaster, opened in the 50s, closed in 1975. This was a common model in the 50s and 60s, 14 of them built around the country, and there actually is one still operating today, Little Dipper at West Virginia's Camden Park. This is maybe about 20 feet tall, no big drops, but a ton of small hills, and it looks like a great nostalgic old wooden coaster using steel supports. This is obviously built as a family coaster, so it's not super thrilling, but given the layout, I think it's interesting and deserves to be over the last two coasters. Number 11. Corkscrew, an Aero Looper, opened in 1978, closed in 1995. This is your classic Aero Corkscrew, 14 of them built around the world, most of them having been relocated at some point. This opened in 1978, three years after the original, that being the world's first modern inverting coaster, Corkscrew at Knott's Berry Farm. This is a clone of that, rising up 70 feet, dropping into a turnaround over the station, turning into back-to-back -back corkscrews, and then you turn to the final brakes. Very simple, but groundbreaking for its time. This was removed and resurfaced at MGM Dizzy World in India, still operating to this day. Number 10, Cyclone, a Pinfari Zyklon, opened in 1976, closed in 1980. There are so many of these around the world, at least 113 that we know of. That doesn't include the ones that pop up at state fairs. This is the Z47 model. That only has 25 official entries, seven still operating, all of them overseas. After this left Jaga Lake, it spent 17 seasons at Holiday World as Firecracker, then spent a year at Jolly Roger Amusement Park in Maryland. Then it was sold to the fair circuit, continuing on at the Ohio State Fairgrounds until 2009. This very portable compact coaster has thin track and thin supports, featuring big drops to start, small drops to finish, and big drawn out turns, ending with a helix. These are fun, simple rides. Not much better you can do when it comes to a large scale portable coaster. Number nine. Double Loop, an Aero Looper, opened in 1977, closed with the park in 2007. Here's one that was actually still standing when I was there, but it wasn't open. This was one of the very early looping coasters, opening a year after Revolution at Magic Mountain, so a coaster with back-to-back -back vertical loops was a big deal. 
This has a very basic layout, just like the core screw that came the year after, starting with a 95 foot lift, a straight drop, rising into a turnaround, then those back to back loops, the track actually going into a trench so you bottom out below the ground, then back up and down a helix before the right ends. Those loopers of the late 70s weren't very complicated, but Giaga Lake was all in on trying to get the best coasters in the market. After the park shut down, this was sold for scrap. Number 8. Raging Wolf Bobs, a Din Corp wooden coaster, opened in 1988, closed in June 2007. This was one of Din's first projects, opening just two weeks after Wolverine Wildcat at Michigan's Adventure, this costing $2 million and its layout patterned after a coaster called Bobs, located at Riverview Park in Chicago. It has an 80-foot lift, tops out at 50 miles an hour, going into a twisted course that a lot of people say was one of the worst they've ever ridden. I did get the ride this in 2002, and my first impression was that it wasn't as bad as people said it would be. My expectations were so low, I didn't end up hating it. Still, even though it wasn't overly rough, I thought after the first drop, the ride was pretty boring. After I rode it, it got one of the Gerslauer trains from the villain, and in 2005, it got a different Gerslauer train from the legend at Holiday World. I don't know if these made the ride any better, but I doubt it. This closed in 2007, but it didn't make it to the last day. In June, it had a train roll back on the lift, partially derail, and that caused a lot of damage to the ride. That was the end of it. This was sold to a company that moves coasters, but it was never rebuilt. Number 7. Headspin of Akoma Boomerang opened in 1996, closed with the park in 2007. This opened as Mind Eraser in 1996, really at the height of popularity for the Vacoma Boomerang. It would use that name until Cedar Fair took over in 2004. This was the park's first edition under its new owner, Premier Parks. They had just acquired the park in 1995, and they would later acquire Six Flags and absorb all their parks into that brand. There is nothing special about this boomerang. 116 feet tall, 47 miles an hour, starts with a catch car lift going backwards up the first spike, dropping into a cobra roll in a loop, then goes up the other spike and does it all backwards. Like Double Loop, this was there when I was there, but it wasn't open. No big deal, it's not like I've never ridden a boomerang before. There are 53 of these that have been built, and like so many others, this found a new home after it left its original park. Cedar Fair decided to give this to one of their new properties, Carowinds, on the North Carolina-South Carolina border. It reopened in 2009 as Carolina Cobra, still going strong today as Flying Cobras. Number 6. Thunderhawk of Acoma SLC, opened in 1998, closed with the park in 2007. This opened as Serial Thriller, rethemed after Cedar Fair took over, and the next clone thrill ride thanks to Premier Parks. This is your standard 689 meter SLC. 27 of those have been built around the world. 109 feet tall, 50 miles an hour, 2,260 feet of track, and 5 inversions. Some SLCs are terrible, others are bearable. When I rode this in 2002, I said it was a pretty big surprise. It was smooth, it had no head banging, and it was forceful. I had no complaints. I guess it's no surprise that when I rode this at its new home, I had the same opinion. This moved to Michigan's Adventure in 2008, keeping the same name, and I got to ride it in 2021 and it was good. Definitely the best SLC that I've ridden that still has the original trains, and a coaster you actually want to ride, not just forced to ride to get the credit. Number 5. Steel Venom, an Intamin Impulse Coaster, opened in 2000, closed in 2006. I mentioned Beaver Land Mine Ride was one of four coasters that opened in 2000. Well, here's another one. It opened as Superman Ultimate Escape, changing its name to Steel Venom when Cedar Fair took over in 2004, your basic 56 meter twist and spike impulse coaster. This provides a very small footprint thrill coaster, the trains hanging under the track, using LSMs to launch a train forward and backward, its max speed being 70 miles an hour, the forward spike being twisted and 185 feet tall, the back spike being the same height but no twist. On some models, including this one when I rode it, it has a holding brake on the back spike, stopping riders facing face down for half a second. It packs a punch for a skinny coaster. If you want to ride this, it's not too late. Go over to Dorney Park and ride Possessed. This left Giaga Lake a year before its closure, reopening here in 2008. Number 4. Big Dipper, a John A. Miller wooden coaster, opened in 1925, closed with the park in 2007. This was the park's original coaster, opening as Skyrocket, changing its name to Clipper in the 40s. And in 1969, it became known as Big Dipper. 99 years ago, at the cost of $50,000, they got a 65 foot tall, 2,680 foot long wooden coaster. It has a pretty basic out and back layout, just having a small twist in the middle so it's not completely straight. This always had a good reputation, and when I rode it, I enjoyed it. I described it as an old fashioned feel, getting tossed around inside the car, both on the turns and little pops of airtime. This was the last remaining relic of Jaga Lake. 
It was kept around after the park closed trying to find a buyer. It sold once in 2008 and then was put back up for sale on eBay in 2010. It had some interest but they couldn't strike a working deal. And in 2016, nine years after its last ride, it was finally demolished. Number three. Villain, a CCI wooden coaster, opened in 2000, closed with the park in 2007. Here we have number three of four editions back in 2000, this being a large-scale wooden coaster using wood track and steel supports. It stood 108 feet tall, maxed out at 59 miles an hour, having almost 4,000 feet of track. The layout looks very similar to Big Dipper, having sort of a boomerang shape, this being a double out-and-back coaster. I got three rides on it and I really enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite wooden coaster, but this ride is all about big drops and it did it very well. I described it as long, having moderate airtime, but lots of stomach wrenching drops. This had Gerslauer trains, similar to the boss at Six Flags St. Louis. And I said the ride was a lot better when the lap bar wasn't smashing you. Seems logical, but I guess stapling was a problem. When the park closed, this was torn down and sold for scrap. Number two, Dominator, a B&M Flawless, opened in 2000, closed with the park in 2007. The fourth and final 2000 coaster, this was the main event of their transformation in Six Flags Ohio. This opened as Batman Night Flight, renamed in 2004 when Cedar Fair took over, and it was the world's longest floorless coaster at 4,210 feet, a record that would never be broken. 157 feet tall, 148 foot drop. It had a very unique layout, covering all that track but only five inversions, featuring two big turnarounds after the first loop, that loop standing 135 feet tall. Then, going into a cobra roll, a mid-course break run, and a lower-the-ground twister second half, featuring interlocking course screws. I rode this three times, and even though I said it was nowhere near as good as my other floors at the time, Medusa at Discovery Kingdom, I said it was very good despite its roughness, and a ride in the front row with nothing in front of you was the absolute best. This was quickly moved to King's Dominion after the park closed, being ready for the 2008 season, using the same name, Dominator, clearing out a section of the parking lot for it. To this day, it's still one of my top floorless coasters. Whatever roughness it had in 2002 is no longer a problem, and it's one of the top rides at King's Dominion. Number 1. X-Flight of a Coma Flying Dutchman opened in 2001, closed in 2006. After the rapid expansion of 2000, they had one more addition in the works, and X-Flight opened as the park's final new coaster in 2001. This was my first experience with a flying coaster, and I was immediately blown away. You start out on your back, go up 115 feet, Flip over into the flying position, reach a top speed of 50 miles an hour, swoop around a flat plot of land, and go into five inversions. The best one being a vertical loop, a totally weird experience while being on your back. It was just 3,340 feet of pure fun. It also had an intense helix finale before twisting to the final breaks. This flew into my top 10 and remains one of my favorite defunct coasters of all time. This got taken out a year before the park closed, finding a new home inside Ohio, going to Cedar Fair's newest acquisition, Kings Island. This operated as Firehawk from 2007 to 2018, and I loved it there also. Unfortunately, it's the only Vacoma Flying Dutchman that's completely gone. That's a wrap on the coasters of Geauga Lake. Let me know what you think, where you agree or disagree, and any other experiences you had with these coasters, sound off in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. And if you're new here and love coasters, please give me a sub. I have a playlist with other parks in this series. Also, check out my second channel for copyright-free off-ride footage, and my baseball channel if you're also a baseball fan. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.